Now we know what calibration sessions are and how to run them, let's explore the goals of these sessions, how often you should conduct them, and look at what to do with the calibration session results. It's important to set calibration goals as these will help guide your sessions. Some common calibration goals are finding misalignments between reviewers, identifying categories that are hard to score, improving internal processes, and keeping your scorecard accurate and up to date. Make sure to keep your goals in mind during your calibration sessions. If one of your goals is to find misalignments between reviewers, then you will need to set up blind calibration sessions. Guiding any discussions that arise back to your calibration goals can help you stay focused. For example, if one of your goals is to improve your internal processes, then instead of arguing about how to score a poorly executed process in a conversation, the discussion should instead be focused on how to improve the process itself. Set out your calibration goals before your first session and share them with your reviewers. How often you should calibrate is dependent on a few things, such as how many unique reviewers you have, who performs the reviews, how frequently they do the reviews, and how much time your reviewers have to perform calibrations. Holding regular calibration sessions will help keep your review program up to date and accurate. If your team does reviews on a weekly basis and you have multiple reviewers, then look to implement monthly calibration sessions. If your review team is on the smaller side, or if you review less frequently, then look to schedule bi-monthly or quarterly sessions. Speaking of scheduling your calibration sessions, let's check in with Treen, Klaus's community manager, for today's tip of the day. When setting up calibration sessions, it is often difficult to find a time in the schedule that suits all of your reviewers. You should look to make your calibration sessions a recurring event, regardless of how frequently you plan to do them. This will avoid any scheduling conflicts around them and ensures that you are able to perform them on a regular basis. If you are looking for more advice or are just interested how other companies plan their calibration sessions, Drop a question to our community called Quality Tribe. Our community is full of support professionals whose experience and tips can give you a fresh view on any issue. And as a bonus, we will treat you with cat gifts every now and then. Thanks, Trine. We've covered how to hold calibration sessions and how frequently you should have them. But what do you actually do with the results? If you have conducted a blind calibration session, then you can compare the benchmark scores to how your reviewers originally scored them. If a reviewer is outside of the benchmark score, then schedule a follow-up meeting or review session to help them align with their scoring. You should also make sure to document any important decisions that you make. Perhaps a discussion led you to define the difference between a 4 and a 5 point rating in greater detail. Whatever you agreed on during the discussion should be reflected in your documentation. Don't forget, to share these updates with the rest of your team, including your support reps, so that they have the most up-to-date information about your review program. Calibration sessions can also lead to important discussions around internal processes for your support team. If you identify conversations where the QA assessment is positive, but the CSAT is negative, you may need to review your internal guidelines. Calibration sessions are a great place to discuss these processes and find ways to improve them. You might be surprised to find outdated processes, or even ones where no one actually knows why they exist in the first place. Make sure to use your findings from your calibration sessions to update these practices. Be sure to check out our blog post below to help you get you started with your own calibration sessions. Next, we'll catch up with Klaus's Empress of Product, Valentina, to see what the best approach is for communicating your review program to the team. Thanks for watching. Where do the cats go when they die? To the purgatory.